All right, all right. What is going on, lovely ladies and gentlemen of the world? Street Fighter Five. Streets Fighter Five. Uh. I'm not going to talk about, this is basically only about the characters themselves. I want to discuss my thoughts on the characters, get your thoughts on it, see what other people think, see if there's some dissension in the ranks in regard to what I think about characters or how I think characters stack up against each other, uh, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, plus, you know, maybe there's something I missed. Maybe somebody's going to know some stuff that I don't, but I don't really want to talk about Street Fighter V uh, as a game itself. I only want to talk about the six characters that were available to play during the beta because my thoughts on Street Fighter V are already well known and they haven't changed after experiencing the beta they really have not changed in regards to the fact that I do think the system that Street Fighter V is a really basic and I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing for it to be as basic as it is but we'll see what happens in the long run you know it's it would all just be theory at this point who cares about theory let's talk about facts so characters now in the interest of you know just so you know where i am coming from uh for the characters that i played myself i played the most out of cammy uh, i played her almost exclusively during the stress test and i definitely still played her i mean in regard to the actual beta itself i definitely kind of played chun cammy and nash about the same amount each like i think i got to about 15,000, 20,000 points with each of them kind of around the same area uh, but I definitely almost like I said I almost exclusively used Cammy during the stress test so she is the character I am most experienced with Chun-Li trailing pretty far back after that and then Nash is kind of around the same area Bison I used for all of like five minutes and I just I feel I mean you know I feel like I understand the character I get his tools uh, and I get what makes him a strong character but I didn't really enjoy his playstyle myself so I didn't play him and then I didn't touch Birdie or Ryu, but neither of those are particularly complicated characters. So let's move right in, and I'm going to talk about the two characters that I just mentioned as the ones that I have the least amount of experience with, because, obviously, I have the least amount to say about them. So Ryu, I mean, Ryu is Ryu. Like, there's really not even anything to really discuss about this character. He is Ryu. He's the well-rounded, great at nothing, bad at nothing. He's got the tools to handle any situation and he is what you make of him you know like he i mean i feel like out of all the characters he is the one that will highlight the most what your strengths and weaknesses are because he is very much a character that relies upon a player's strength in order to succeed and we definitely you know let's not get into that let's not get into the quality of the play we witnessed during the street fighter 5 beta suffice to say i don't even know any of these motherfuckers count if i did was not already aware of the fact that Ryu had a target combo that ends in his kick thing that ends in a knockdown, I would not know Ryu had a fucking target combo. I never saw it once. The Legion of Ryu was out, and they did not know how to play. So, I, I you know, if I'm not picking Ryu myself, everything that I would learn about this character would come from matchup experience. And, you know, again, I don't want to, like, sh I mean, I'm not trying to say, oh, if you pick Ryu, you're a scrub, you know, ignore that. No, it is just all of the Ryus I personally played were scrubs. Plenty of scrubs used Ryu. Not every Ryu was a scrub. That whole, you know, philosophical shit and whatnot. Um, but so, like I said, I mean, I know he's a very strong character. He has some very strong combos, a lot of damage. He's got some shit in Dungeon mode. But, you know, again, it's the same exact thing where... I'm witnessing, you know, people using V-Trigger and going into dungeon mode and then jumping full screen and using charged fireballs. And it's just kind of like, okay, what was the point of that? So, you know, because of that, I don't really know much about Ryu specifically at a high level because I have not played a good, you know, I've played good versions of every other character in the game. Good players using every other character in the game, but I really just... Oh boy, did not play a good Ryu. So I just, unfortunately, my knowledge of that character is basically the worst out of the rest of the cast. You know, despite the fact that he is what he is, you know, Ryu is Ryu. I don't really have specifics to speak about because nobody really used him well. <laughs> so let's move right along to Birdie. Now, Birdie's amazing. He, in my opinion, is the second best character in this game. And that is because he has the best selection of buttons in the game like i cannot think i don't know if i saw every again 
rolling back to the fact that I did not play this character myself, so I do not know what every single one of his buttons looks like, but I have to say, every button that I saw was amazing, had a purpose, was very solid, was very good, you know, it wasn't like, oh, wow, that hitbox sucks, no, every single one of his hitboxes was great, uh, numerous purposes behind all of his normals, and the one thing, you know, kind of the one of the things that is going to happen when you're first starting out with a game, you know, three days, regardless of how basic I may say Street Fighter V is, three days is not enough time. Three days, it was five days. Five days, a week, two weeks, even potentially a month is just not enough time to really solidify your abilities with the character and intrinsically understand this is my best option in this situation. This is what I will use. You know, you may know, like, oh, well, if I need to ants here, I need to use this button. But even knowing that doesn't mean you can do it when the situation arises. You need to get matchup experience and just understand that needs to become, you know, a reaction that exists in your bone marrow. That is not something that you can just, like, Oh, well, the uh, Shoryuken forums, the Shoryuken character forums on Birdie say that I need to use crouching medium punches and anti-air. Thus, because this character is jumping, I shall crouching medium punch. That's not how fighting games work. You just have to be put into the situation over and over and over again and fuck up over and over and over again until finally you stop fucking up and you're just like, okay, this is what I need to do every single damn time. Now I'm going to do it every single damn time but you know one so that's kind of the thing is that there were a lot of underutilized tools that i can sit here and look at them and understand okay that is an amazing move people aren't using it they need to but again five days is not enough time to completely alter your play style and understand that oh I'm not using this button enough. It wasn't even really five days. Technically, it was four days because there was probably like, what, 12 hours of, uh, more than 12. Because wasn't it from like 4 p.m. to 7 a.m. was one of the uh, system maintenances and then PSN underwent its own maintenance for like six, seven hours, something like that. So probably around like 20 hours or so at least of uh, maintenance. So really, it was only four days to, you know, kind of understand this. I need to be using this button more i need to be doing this more five days is just not enough to be able to do that to be able to say all right i'm using these tools and they're working for me but i could be better if i use these tools that's one of the main things that's really difficult about fighting games is when you're trying to learn something new and you fuck it up you revert back to what you know works you're now playing to win it's a very fucking difficult thing to play to learn instead of playing to win it's just, I mean, it's a simple, like, mindset. You want to win. Nobody wants to lose. Nobody is sitting here going, you know what? I am perfectly okay with losing. Nobody is okay with losing. It sucks. Every single time you lose, it sucks. And so because of that, I am supposed to be talking about characters. Who gives a shit? I'm finishing this thought. Um, so whenever you start to lose, again, you go back to doing what you know will win. You stop testing and you just play you go back to what is in your bone marrow and so the shit that isn't there yet gets thrown out the door and then possibly never ends up there in the first place because you just forget about it in the heat of the moment it is one of the most difficult things in the world to do that to test a new tool over and over and over knowing this is probably going to fail this is probably not my best option at this point but I'm going to do it anyway. That is such a difficult thing to do. So that kind of, you know, ties into what I was saying about how, how there's a lot of tools that I can see that characters have that I'm thinking like, this is really strong. People need to be doing this. People should be doing this. For instance, EX Cannon Strike with Kami was something that I very, very rarely used. But it is an absurdly strong tool for her. It's ridiculously plus on block. You can TK it. Um... Its trajectory is basically impossible to anti-air unless you potentially, you know, like think, oh, well, if an EX cannon strike, I can sure you can hear and it'll catch an EX cannon strike if it comes out. But if it doesn't, I'm going to whiff and he's going to get a punish. So like EX cannon strike is an amazing tool that I really didn't use myself. So that's kind of, you know, an example of what I'm talking about here that I fell back on what I knew worked and 
I didn't utilize an extremely strong tool that would drastically alter my gameplay as well as the quality of my play to begin with. And so that's how it kind of works with a lot of other characters. So anyway, back to Birdie. Underutilized tools. His banana. Holy shit, what a good... I mean, so let me just talk about how I feel Birdie's gameplay revolves around. He is not designed to be a rushdown character. He is not designed to be continually in your face pressuring you nonstop. Birdie is designed to be a defensive wall. To build a wall of ridiculous normals that is ridiculously frustrating to try and get through. He's Dalsum in a far more horrifying form. Essentially is what I'm kind of trying to say. Is that he, again, he's not designed as this heavy mix-up character. He's not designed as like a frame trap character. He is designed to punish you when you try to get in on him. And he has a multitude of ways of doing that. He Again, he has the soda can that he can force you to try and jump. And then he can chain use the anti-air chain on you. Uh, just, uh, again, very, very strong normals. He has the potential, you know, once you're kind of scared of Birdie. He does have that command grab, which I'll admit, pretty gimmicky, easily reactable. But if you're playing scared against Birdie, you're worried about, you know, oh, well, the anti-air command grab may come out, or the anti-air chain may come out at any point in time. Let me stay grounded, and now all of a sudden he's leaping across the screen and grabbing you. You know, like, it's not a good tool. It's not. Like, that was, if I had to point to the weakest thing Birdie has, it's that command grab. But it still has its situational uses. And so that's the entire point of Birdie in my mind, is that he is supposed to be a wall that you have to break through but it's a very structurally sound wall and the banana is such a good addition to that that almost nobody uses when the banana is down you cannot jump in on that character if you jump in he will block you you will land on the banana and he will get a punishment like he doesn't even have to answer you you, you just land on the banana and he gets a punish uh, you can't walk into it and block it You if you walk into it you're staggering now it's not easy to confirm off of it but it is possible and so you know the banana is basically just like come at me i fucking dare you and it's really goddamn hard to do so um so that is such an amazing it just allows him to run his game plan perfectly it is the perfect tool for the entire point of birdie as a character and yet almost nobody used it um what else was there so basically his downside, you know, I just, I just went all through all that stuff saying he has the best collection of buttons in the game. The banana needs to be used more. Um, I feel like his, I, well, we'll get into the next, I forgot to mention this point. I'll go into the next point next. I don't need to be mentioning this because you don't know what my game plan is. But anyway, Birdie's command grab. Now he has two command grabs. He has the one where he just like clutches your head and headbutts you. And then he has, you know, the one that I mentioned already where he jumps forward and grabs you, which is reactable and really kind of just not very good. Uh, I don't know how fast that his regular command grab is, his standing command grab that doesn't, you know, he doesn't lunge forward and whatever. Um, but I do know it has some very, very good range, you know, range you wouldn't expect a command grab to work from. Like it's some Zangief Light 360 range like where it's just like, holy shit, that worked from there? That's what it is. Now, again, I don't know how fast it is, but I feel like that is Birdie's best, like, anti-pressure tool, where if you use something that's, like, negative three, he can grab you out of it. Like, that kind of thing. Like, again, I don't know the frame data on it, but I feel like this is, again, an underutilized tool that might allow him to get out of pressure. And that's, you know, segueing into the point I was about to go into, how once you break through that wall with Birdie, Birdie's free. Like, he doesn't have any... Like, he can't really counter-poke you because while his pokes are amazing, they're slow. So he can't really compete with other people poking. However, again, it's just a simple fact where he doesn't want to, like, counter-poke you or necessarily whiff-punish you. He just wants to try and catch you while you're trying to walk forward on him. Um, And so, again, you know, once you get past that wall, it's really a struggle for him after that but that being said continuing on the underutilized tools the theme of this talk uh v reversal birdie has three v gauges i don't think the benefit he gets from v trigger is worthwhile enough for him to not use v reversal because think about this you have established yourself in the neutral you have managed to break down this character's wall that took you a lot of frustration a lot of effort 
but finally you're in. You got a hit. You got a knockdown. Now it's your turn. And so you start running your pressure. And then he he V-reversals you, and now that wall is right back where it was. Like you never got through it in the first place. And he can potentially do that four, five, maybe six times per match, depending on how it works out for him with his V-gauge. That would be mentally debilitating. To go through all of that effort to finally move in on this guy. And then he just V-reversals you back away. And now you got to do it all over again. It's reset. The clock is reset. All of your effort is reset. And now you have to do it again. That, I feel like, is one of Birdie's most important tools. And the V-reversal is most important to Birdie out of everybody in the game. And so I feel like once people actually really start intrinsically understanding, like, don't just V-trigger every single time. Start using V-reversal. It sucks for that to happen to you. And you have no, I mean, you know, the mental game, if you make somebody break, if you frustrate somebody, you probably won. Pure and simple. So, you know, if you're a birdie player, think about using that V-reversal a little bit. That's all I'm saying. So, moving on to the next character. Monsieur Bipson, M. Bison, best in the game. That is my opinion. I believe it is fact. But who knows? Maybe you disagree. Uh, now, granted, you know, getting into, I'm sure anybody that's gonna talk about Bison is gonna talk about his walk speed. Now, granted, I have no idea how anybody can make Bison walk the way he walks and go, yeah, perfect, nailed it, first try. That is the perfect walk speed for this character, the perfect movement speed for any fighting game character, we nailed it. Like, I, I don't understand how anybody could try and control that and be like, no, speed it up at least a fucking little bit. Like, Nash is the lower end of the spectrum where it's, like, acceptable. Bison is just, is this character even moving? What's happening here? So, I really don't get that, but that being said, if you are walking around with bison, you're playing that character wrong, straight up. Uh, and number, uh, just you know, talking about his movement, he has one of the best forward dashes in the game. I'm not sure if it might be the best. It's a contest between bison and Nash. I don't know who wins out there. I think Nash gets the edge, but again, I don't have enough experience with bison to strictly say, absolutely yes, Nash's dash is far better. That being said. Bison's V trigger gash? Gash. Bison's V trigger dash? Holy smokes. That is the best dash in the game. No contest. But it's obviously, you know, you can't have that all the time. But still, his V trigger dash? Ho, ho, ho. God help you when that character enters V trigger. Anyway, crouching medium punch. Like I said, so Birdie has the overall best collection of buttons in the game. When you take all of his buttons, you average them out, and you look at the overall quality. When they're all just, you know, thrown into a barrel and you pick one out, it's always going to be good. Not so with Bison. But, Crouching Medium Punch is the best, the single best button in the game right now. It is a move that has damn near jab startup that he can confirm off of 100% of the time that has the range of, like, most characters standing medium kick but again almost the speed of a jab it is absurdly fast for its range it is the best button in the game if you do not watch capcom pro talk monsieur flow equated a uh, crouching medium punch and the light scissor kick as being honda's crouching jab into jab hands i mean not into jab hands jab into hands jab hands is actually a terrible move but moving along, you know, because I kind of, I think it's better than that. Honda's not a very good character. Bison? Ho, ho, ho. Um, but again, you go into underutilized moves. You have this character. His flames? Holy God. They're so safe. Oh, you can poke him out of them. Like, they do have a certain amount of startup. But that's the entire point of the character is, like, you can poke him out of them. But what if he scissor kicks? You're eating boots to the face. Nobody wants to eat boots to the face. So it's, again, Crouching Medium Punch is just this character. He needs one button, and it's Crouching Medium Punch. He can get away. I mean, 
Standing heavy punch, amazing. Standing heavy kick, holy shit, as a pressure tool, standing heavy kick, are you kidding me? That is a ridiculous button. Scarily plus on block, can confirm it into a full combo. Fuck his standing heavy kick, I want his old roundhouse back. I would rather deal with that neutral dominating tool than his current fucking frightening as hell standing heavy kick. That character scares me. And that is why I put him at the top is because like Birdie is a struggle. It's a struggle to get through Birdie's buttons. Cammy scares the living daylights out of me when she's in my face. And we'll get into more of that in a bit. Chun-Li doesn't scare me at all. <laughs> Charlie, eh. Not as much as Cammy. Bison scares me all the goddamn time. Thus, best character in the game. The only part about Birdie that scares me is his goddamn character design. And that is outside the confines of this conversation. But fuck his character design. Back to Bison. Uh, Devil's Reverse. Also, almost nobody's using it. Basically, everybody just kind of goes into head stomp. But Devil's Reverse is amazing. You can cross up with it. You can cross... He is swinging like three feet over on the other side of your head and he will shoulder check you on the way down this motherfucker played some hockey in between street fighter 4 and street fighter 5 and he learned how to shoulder check some motherfuckers and he puts it into work when he's doing devil's verse that move has an amazing hitbox but nobody's using it because everybody is so fixated on head stomp and scissor kick right now uh also, you know, you kind of have to mention, go, I forgot to mention this when I was talking about his flames, but how his flames are an amazing move. It's kind of weird, too, though, because it's a uh, down charge and then up plus a punch. That's what the command is right now. And that's a little funky to be using in pressure. I'll freely admit, like, that's not the easiest thing to kind of deal because most people don't really think, like, oh, a down up move for pressure. Like, down up is head stomp, uh, devil's reverse, sonic or sonic kick flash kick um who else has it isn't that what vega's uh wall jump thing is anyway point being butt stomp never in the history of street fighter as far as i'm aware feel free to correct me as far as i'm aware never in the history of street fighter has a down charged move ever been a pressure tool but bison has it they're changing it it's gonna become a half circle motion it, or it's become a half circle motion in recent iterations of the game in recent builds of the game i don't know if that'll stick but it's scary if it does because that means bison now has he has blanca lightning he has chun li lightning legs not in this game but in previous game he has honda hands that's what his flames are and those are scary pressure tools so like bison's getting better he is already scaring the living shit out of me, and he's getting better. So, uh, kudos to those of you that picked Bison. Well done on your character selection. Congratulations on your imminent tournament wins. All right. Uh, let's see, let's see. So, same, but again, you know, obviously every character in this game has a weakness. There is not a single, well, except for you. But, again, every single character that is great at something has a weakness. Bison is free on wake up. Same thing as Birdie. Now, the difference with Birdie is that, like I said, he can't, Birdie can't really counter poke you out of things. He can't really just hit buttons and say, nah, you gotta respect these, dude. You don't get to just pressure me for free because I don't have a reversal. His buttons are good enough that he can counter poke out of situations, so he's not just stuck endlessly in pressure unless he wants to throw out a V reversal or a super. He is very adept at uh, counter poking you. So. Again, that's another reason why I think he's the best in the games because he's not quite as free as Birdie on defense. Um, and then again, one of the scariest V triggers in the game, second scariest in my opinion in the game. And we'll get to more of that in a bit when we get to Chun Li. But we're gonna talk about Cammy next. Now, again, every single character except Ryu is like extremely strong at something, but not so strong at other things. When it comes to Cammy. She has the best frame traps in the in the game. I mentioned this. When Cammy's in your face, it is horrifying. It is stressful. Dealing with that character sucks. Is she going to throw me? Is she going to uh, frame trap me? Is she going to try to go for like a cross up uh, into, you know, her little hooligan combo thing and then do a cross up dive kick on me? Is I there is is she going to throw bait me? What is going to happen? The only tool she is lacking is an overhead, but she doesn't need it. She absolutely does not need it. Um, and so again, like, when that character's in your face, horrifying. When she's not, 
not even moderately worrisome. She her neutral game does not worry me in any way, shape, or form. I can I feel like a hundred percent of the time I can beat that character in neutral. But then if she does manage to get a hit on me into a knockdown, God help me. That's what I think about that character. Now, again, this is the character that I have the most experience with, so I do have more uh, kind of specific examples. Back Heavy Punch, I think, might be the best anti-air in the game. It might be. I'm not positive, uh, because it doesn't have a lot of, like, forward horizontal, but it has enough. It has enough. It's incredibly fast. The hitbox is very high, so chances are, like, you know, if you're trying to do throw bait shit, or um, throw bait, anti-air bait shit, like, for instance, Cammy's Cannon Strike. If you're trying to do that, chances are back heavy, heavy punch is going to hit you anyway. Amazing. Ford Heavy Kick, best throw bait in the game. And EX Cannon Strike is not far behind, but you actually get more of a ward off of uh, Ford Heavy Kick. But that being said, Ford Heavy Kick is also not plus on block. So, like, if you, if the person does actually block it, they can, it's their turn. It's not punishable, but it's not plus. So, you know, if you throw that out and it gets blocked, Unless the opponent is scared of you, which granted, it's Cammy, they should be, but if they're, you know, petrified of you, then they may let you get away with continuing to run your pressure after a forward heavy kick, and it is not a good look if you do. Um, crotch, now, uh, getting into the stuff that is not so good, now this is all stuff that I feel like would be nice to have, but in no way, shape, or form am I saying like, oh, she needs this to be a good character. No, she's a good character. She's a very, very good character. Um, oh, and I, I kind of did mention, so I think Bison's the best. I think Birdie is like right underneath, but just because he is that much freer on wake up, it alters it a little bit to put him a little bit below Bison. And then the other four characters are basically all the same. Like they're all the same quality level. Ryu is just the well-rounded, great at nothing, but bad at nothing either character. And so he's kind of like the baseline. And then, you know, Cammy is fantastic at one thing, but not so great at another. Charlie is fantastic at one thing, but not so great at another. Chun-Li is not so fantastic at anything, but not so bad at anything either. But then she V-triggers, and holy shit, the game has changed. Uh, and so, again, we're going to talk about that in a bit, but I did want to just mention that. It's like I consider Bison and Birdie to be elevated a little bit above the other four, but the other four are right there with them, and they are all scary in their own right. There is no, like, ah, this character sucks. Don't even bother picking them. That doesn't exist in this game. Um, so continuing on with Cammy again. Stuff that I feel like, you know, might deserve to be changed, but it's kind of, again, like, eh, doesn't need it. Crouching Heavy Punch is a crush counter. I feel like it should be, the timer of the crush counter should be extended a little bit. Because right now, basically, if you hit it at max range, there's nothing you can do. You might be able to land a spiral arrow from there, and but it's, eh. Now, again, this is, but this is stemming, and again, something why I said that I don't really feel like she needs this. This is stemming from my own personal viewpoint of, like, what I think they want crush counters to be, where crush counters should be this rewarding, uh, really strong version of a counter hit. It's this game's version of fatal counter, so it should be the, you get the greatest reward off of this stuff. And right now, Cammy, she has two of them, actually, her standing roundhouse and her crouching uh, fierce, is that what it's called? Her crouching heavy punch? Both of those are crush counters, but the standing heavy kick really isn't a good enough tool to be able to really reliably get crush counters. Not that crush counters are reliable in the first place, but it's still like crouch, a standing roundhouse is just not a move you would really use with Cami in neutral, whereas her crouching heavy punch is. But again, you know, she doesn't certainly doesn't need it. You still get a knockdown, and again, now she's in your face, so that's phenomenal. Um, it, I'm confused why crouching medium punch is not a low, given that she's hitting you in the ankles. But, again, don't think she needs it. Uh, is there anything else? Oh, her V skill. Uh, worst V skill in the game, in my opinion. Because it's supposed to... So, like, a lot of characters in this game kind of actually have anti-fireball V skills. You could even technically say uh, Birdies is an anti-fireball just by virtue of, like, you can't throw fireballs while the soda can is rolling along. <laughs> I guess you could consider that an anti-fireball. But so, you know, like Bison will grab a fireball and toss it back ridiculously fast. Nash will grab it and it'll add to his V skill. Um, Chun can bypass fireballs with hers. I don't think it's projectile and vulnerable at all, but it's still got a low enough trajectory that you could potentially use it in neutral to punish a fireball throw. And Cammy's just straight goes through fireballs. Who did I forget? Did I forget somebody? Ryu. Perry. 
it's anti everything really <laughs> it's not just anti fireball but you can certainly use it to just nullify fireballs um but anyway so yeah so with cammy the entire point of hers is that it is projectile and vulnerable it goes through fireballs but the projectile and vulnerability takes so long to come out that you really can't utilize it reactively and again, this is something that I'm just kind of sitting here like, I don't really think she needs this, but it'd be nice if the projectile and vulnerability started up a little bit faster or the move was sped up. And then by virtue of the move being sped up, projectile and vulnerability would come out a little bit faster. But again, I don't think she needs it in any way, shape or form, but it's still kind of a consideration. Like this is what the move was designed for, but it sucks for doing that. So, eh, I don't know. Um, let's see, let's see, is that kind of it? That's mostly it. Basically, just another one little quick, you know, mention. I think Stun is the most... She is the most threatening character with Stun in the game. Because, you know, in general, jabs will do the lowest. Uh, medium buttons will do, you know, average. Heavy buttons will do the most. Cammy has multiple ways to combo into heavy buttons throughout her combos. Thus, she's using moves that have the highest amount of Stun attributed to them. And then Spiral Arrow is no slouch at adding stun, but Cannon Spike? Oh my god, that is that move does a lot of stun. So once she start you know, once she gets you into the corner and she's not sending you mid-screen with her cannon spikes and she's actually getting Oki off of the knockdown, and she's able to use cannon spike in combos, she's gonna be racking up the stun ridiculously quickly. And so and you know, she's not she's not exactly a low damage character to begin with, so you add in stun like it's entirely possible to win games with cammy in three combos like no joke one combo two combo third combo stuns and then you finish them from that stun like she is has the i think the highest average damage output in the game belongs to cammy in my opinion so that <laughs> Uh, and again, though, I don't really feel like her neutral is particularly scary, but once that neutral, once, you know, the neutral game is over and she's in your face, she's going to be bodying you a bit. So I really do think Cammy is very, very, very strong as a momentum character. She always has been. So moving on to Charlie. Really, really good pressure. He has multiple moves that move him forward and still allow him to maintain pressure. And he can also confirm off of them. Everything he can confirm into can go into a knockdown, which you really cannot. There's a reason why Bison Scissor Kick does not knock down anymore. Knockdown is such a huge thing to be able to get in fighting games. And, you know, I mean, overall, the only characters that really are not getting a knockdown off of every single hit they get are Chun and Bison right now. But Nash gets a knockdown off of everything. It's not like, oh, I got this random stray hit. I can't really do anything off of it there's almost nothing that you can attribute that statement to with Nash. Crouching medium kick is it. Because for some mysterious reason, his crouching medium kick is not special cancelable. I don't know why. I really don't. But it's not special cancelable. I just, I don't understand it, but that's how that move is. <laughs> but, I mean, everything can confirm into something, into a knockdown. It is very reliant upon hit confirms for sure because none of his spent well i don't want to say none of his special moves are safe the only special move he has that is safe and is uh is his like kind of spin kick kind of a deal but the startup of that is long enough that he can get hit out of it fairly regularly if you know what to look for um but anyway like i said probably the best pressure in the game v trigger i don't know they uh, there is word going around they nerfed his v-trigger in the uh newest builds of the game that certain combos are no longer possible I, but again that's all they say is like certain combos are no longer possible they didn't mention this particular route is no longer available the uh he puts himself further away from the opponent when he does uh v-trigger thus you can't do like for instance crouching heavy punch in the back medium kick you can't do that anymore because you're too far away for the back medium kick if you're not aware of nash Crouching heavy punch and the back medium kick is his highest damage, like meterless route in the game. Uh, and so mid screen, he can confirm into that from V trigger and he can easily get like 600 plus damage from that if you use V trigger properly. So pretty scary. I can understand why that might be nerfed. Uh, but so again, you know, the simple fact of the matter is if you use V trigger properly, it's an amazing tool, but apparently it might've been too amazing and they're nerfing it and I don't know how, so I don't want to get too deeply into it. Uh, oh, 
So his down, what's his downside? You know, you just talked about all this shit about Nash. What's his downside? He is completely free on wake up. Again, Bison can potentially counter poke you. Nash doesn't really have the range. He has the frames, the frame advantage on his normals to be able to use no, uh, far reaching normals. Like for instance, Ford heavy punch or Ford heavy kick or Ford medium kick, stuff like that. Those are not moves you can use to counter poke. And all of his moves that would potentially work as counterpoke really have no real range to them. So once he gets pushed to a certain distance where like a character is potentially forced to be using buttons that you would, you know, potentially be able to beat out because there's they don't come out fast enough after you block something, he can't really do anything from those distances. He kinda has to reset neutral and then, you know, fight you from there rather than actually trying to counterpoke you like Bison would be able to. But that being said, Bison and Birdie both still have Wake Up Super. If they really desperately need it, they have that. Nash doesn't. His Super is only projectile and vulnerable. It will lose to meaties. I know that because I have beaten it <laughs> numerous times. I have also had uh, it beaten. It beat me once on my own Wake Up. And I was like, wow, I am never doing that again. Uh, so yeah, it loses to actual hits. It just It's projectile and vulnerable and that's it. So Nash is completely and utterly free on wake up. He ha he does not have a single reversal move. So again, you go back to how useful is V reversal for this character? Is this something that you would want to be, you know, instead of relying upon V trigger for massive combo damage or potentially it's kind of a surprise, hello, I'm in your face right now. Uh, would it be better to use V reversals with this character? Who knows? We'll see with time. Um, what else? It, nothing else really. Everything else is just, you know, Nash is a really good character. Pure and simple. So Chun! Chun, Chun, Chun. Chun is a difficult prospect. Because I feel like her base character has some good tools. But she can't really compete. Like, you have to outplay. You know, there's not like, oh, you know, we're kind of trading hits back and forth. I can show you my character strength. You show me yours. And whoever manages to get into the proper range... To truly uh, show off the character strength kind of wins the fight, but it's a chess battle to get there in the first place. I feel like Chun is actually kind of at a loss uh, in regards to kind of everything. I feel like there are characters that have better neutral than her, better pressure than her, better frame traps than her, better mix up than her. Uh, she is, in my opinion, at her very core, the weakest character in the game. That being said, there's a reason why I said she is a tricky prospect to deal with. Her V-Trigger is the best in the game, by far. I equate it in my mind as kind of a similar impactful move as Jury's uh, Feng Shui Engine, where you take this character, has some pretty strong tools, but I wouldn't really consider her scary. Then you add in this extra thing that gives her more functionality, that allows her to do a lot of things that were previously she was previously incapable of. Now all of a sudden, she is a monster capable of stealing games from you. That's Chun in this game. Her V-Trigger allows her to combo off of things that she wouldn't be able to normally. It allows her to get massive damage if you know what to confirm into. Like again, it comes back to the fact that you really need strong confirms to fully take advantage of Chun. And that's why I think she's tricky because like, can you make Chun stronger without making her overpowered in V-Trigger? That's the question. And that's what I'm thinking you know, like I see all these moves that she has and I'm thinking you know what I think that could serve to be buffed a little bit but then you think but V-Trigger should it be that much better in V-Trigger and the answer honestly is no no it should not be <laughs> so it's really tricky to balance Chun I feel like she is going to be the hardest character to really truly balance out in this game because of that simple facet that her V-Trigger is as strong as it is um but anyway, to talk about the things that I would change about Chun, if V-Trigger is not an issue, back medium punch. So, just to kind of, you know, if you're not really aware of how Street Fighter V works or how a lot of games work, some characters have command normals. I, don't, I can't really think of a fighting game where characters don't have command normals. And when I say command normals, I mean you have to hold a direction and then hit a button. So, like, for instance, with Chun, Ford uh, Heavy Kick is different than just regular Heavy Kick. Chun has a medium punch command normal too, medium punch command normals, but they're both the same. If you do forward medium punch and back medium punch, it gives you the same exact normal. It confuses me a little bit. Like there's no, I'm not talking about this like, oh, that needs to be changed, but it kind of, it's weird. 
I cannot think of anything that's in a similar vein as that, where a character has a command normal, that it's the same thing off of different directions. But the reason why I really dislike that move is it's like, that is the one thing that could have made Kikoken useful. I think, in my opinion, Kikoken is almost useless in this game. It does have its purposes once you're at a far enough range where pokes aren't a worry that you can throw that out and then advance behind it. But other than that, I don't think it has block string functionality. Uh, I don't think it's worthwhile in block strings. I don't think it is worthwhile in combos. I think it is the closest thing to a worthless tool this game has. And the one reason why is because back medium punch is not special cancelable. She is lacking a button that she can use while holding back in the mid range that would allow her to special cancel. There is no button that allows her to do that. Back heavy punch is special cancelable, but it's an up close tool. It, it has very little range to it. Uh, crouching medium kick doesn't have the same range, doesn't really have enough range to be able to really want to be using Kikoken off of it. Her medium kick is not special cancelable. Her jabs don't have enough range. Her shorts don't have enough range. She does not have anything at the mid range, which is where Chun Li should excel at, to be able to throw a Kikoken and advance just a little bit behind it. Thus, in my opinion, making Kikoken almost useless. And so if you made back medium punch special cancelable, Kikoken would no longer be useless. But should does she deserve that? I don't know. Uh let me see, let me see. Spinning bird kick. Is can she do anything with the medium or heavy versions of spinning bird kick? Like, I don't think it's possible. She can basically. You can confirm a crouching light punch into spinning bird kick. Nothing else. Nothing else. <laughs> there is, uh, I, I cannot think because she doesn't have any good crouching normals, really, to be perfectly honest. Her crouching medium punch is useless. Her crouching medium kick is not a move that she would be able to utilize after holding down for long enough to be able to confirm into a spinning bird kick. And I don't even know if it does confirm into spinning bird kick. And then you have Crouching Heavy Punch, which is only special cancelable on the first hit, and thus you don't really have time to charge a downward move while using it, and Sweep is Sweep, it's not special cancelable. So, again, I don't really think, like, I'm not sitting here thinking, oh, she needs a way to be able to confirm in a medium and heavy spinning bird kick. No, I don't think so, but it's kind of weird that, like, there really is no time to ever use it. Like, it's not like, oh, there's this really obscure hit confirm you can use to go into those moves. Like, there's nothing. There's literally nothing that I can think of that anybody else has come up with either that utilizes medium or heavy uh, spinning bird kick. Let's see. So going back, I just said crouching medium punch is stupid. It's stupid. It's a terrible move. It should be a command normal, and she should get a real crouching medium punch. Uh, for those of you that don't know, she does like this very, very minuscule forward slide thing, and she punches you in your feet. It does work as an anti-fireball, but the range is so bad that, like, you would never be able to actually reactively use it as an anti-fireball. It would never work. You cannot confirm it. There's no way to confirm it. Counter hit, counter hit, and V-trigger. You cannot confirm that move. It is so bad. Her overhead is so bad. I don't want it. No, I don't, I'm don't. i not saying her overhead is useless. Uh, and I feel like regularly, yes, useless. And V-trigger? <laughs> it's safe. It has a pretty decent amount of forward momentum. Thus can be utilized to continue pressure but outside of v-trigger and again that's the tricky thing right you have this tool that i think is useless easily reactable potentially even punishable on reaction not just oh i can block this i can you know this is an overhead that i can block 99 percent of the time i feel like it's slow enough that you can react to it and beat it not just block it beat it that's how bad that move is in my head um but then again v-trigger it's so good in V-Trigger. Um, but down forward heavy kick. That's the move where she hops over you and kicks. Unless I am missing something completely, that move is useless. Completely useless. You can crouch it 100% of the time. Because I have never seen a situation where she does not kick where like the person's head would be if they were standing. Thus, if they're crouching, their head isn't there. She will miss every single time, and you will get a free whiff punish. Completely useless move. Um, jumping heavy punch. 
It used to be a command normal in both third strike. In every game that I have played with Chun in it, that has been a command normal. You get two hits, but you have to hit heavy punch twice in the air in order to get both hits. In this game, you hit heavy punch once and you get both hits. And it's weird because an air to air hit, the first hit will cause a juggleable state. The second hit will knock them out of a juggleable state. So you can't control it in any way aside from like maybe anyway point being either return it to a command normal or keep the juggleable state on both hits so you can actually get something out of air to airing with it although i think in v trigger it does maintain the juggleable state fucking v trigger ruins everything but again so like you know that's just that's trying to in a nutshell to me she is just not a very i don't want to say she's a bad character she's not a bad character at all she's a good character She's just not on the level of quality that the rest of the cast is right now. But then you factor in V-Trigger, and she becomes one of the scariest characters in the game. So how do you balance that? Because it affects every normal she has. It is not like Kami, where it only affects her special moves. It's not like Bison, where it affects his movement and his special moves. Or like Ryu, where it really only affects his fireballs. I think it adds extra uh, stun to his punches, maybe damage, and Shoryuken as well. But it's not really altering his functionality very much um nash's v trigger isn't an active thing and i think birdie only gets a damage bonus i don't think he gets anything but extra damage during his v trigger whereas chun every single move she has is altered in v trigger that's so powerful and that's so absurdly hard to balance around so again it's a very i feel like chun is the trickiest character in the game to actually maintain proper balance for because if you make her base form extremely good her v trigger is going to be overpowered so it's very it's it's a hard thing to balance that character so anyway that took me ages to get through sorry if you enjoyed all of this thank you for listening the entire way through let me know how you feel about the characters uh good thing i didn't try to talk about the new characters because there are four more announced but i don't really know anything about them yet so i don't really want to talk about them until i have specific stuff to reference so as always, thank you for listening, and when I have something else to talk about, I will.